Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I wanted to discuss some questions that I've been getting asked quite frequently. And while I've answered them technically in other videos, I wanted to just compile them all into one video because as I said, I've been getting a lot of emails and messages asking me what's the release timing on the next generation hardware? Should you wait for RDNA 3 or Lovelace? And you know, just a couple of other things. So we're just gonna answer all of that in this video. Hopefully you enjoy it. So first of all, what's the release timing? Well, of course, this stuff is definitely up in the air and ultimately you should take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt. However, I'm fairly confident in the release timings of this stuff at this point. I don't believe we're gonna be seeing RDNA 3 this year at all. In fact, I think it's going to be the second half of 2022. And if you look at what AMD are doing in the market, it just makes sense. They've not even released the RX 6600 or other cards. The RX 6700 has only just come to the market. And honestly, at this point, the 6700 could be way worse of a mid-range card and it would still have sold out. Like they could have clocked that thing to like two gigahertz at max and people still would probably have bought it even close to the same price because the market is just, it's just, well, yeah, it's not exactly in the best situation. So I think that uh, AMD still have a ton of room left in RDNA 2 and they're just gonna let it rock. And the same thing, by the way, for NVIDIA. RTX 40, aka Lovelace, I don't think is this year at all either. I think it's going to be next year. One person had told me that they believe that NVIDIA might release sooner than AMD. In fact, it could be as early as you know late this year so I don't know what late this year means. I'll say November, although I'm putting words in their mouth there. They just said late this year or possibly early next year. However, again, I'm not certain this is true and I'm pretty sure it's going to be later on in the year. And there are several reasons behind this. One, of course, is just the shortages. I think that just transitioning to a new set of hardware you need to make sure that yields are high, you've got you know, all of the production schedule kind of sorted out and all the other things too that just go into releasing new hardware. It takes quite a long time, of course. We've not seen any real solid leaks yet. We saw one benchmark, which looks like it's RDNA 3, but it also looked like it was a very early production sample. And the other thing too, neither manufacturer has a particular need to. They're kind of in this weird position. NVIDIA and AMD are kind of arguable in rasterization performance. NVIDIA are ahead when it comes to ray tracing. AMD have their own wins like extra VRAM. And yeah, NVIDIA does have DLSS, but AMD have their own solution, which is in incoming. But FSR is apparently not machine learning. It's quite different. FSR is apparently being backported for RDNA 1 as well, but I don't know how performant it's going to be, what the visual quality is going to be like. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. It's apparently an alpha with games developers, and I've covered a lot of this extensively before, so I'm just going to touch on it briefly here. Performance targets of these next cards are going to be very impressive indeed, but with this current generation, they're kind of in this really weird position where they're okay. And obviously the release of a new architecture is an expensive thing. And I, by which I mean here, the marketing around it, but the design, the bring up, everything surrounding it is extremely expensive. They're gonna wanna wring as much out of these current architectures as possible. And I think that the market too is no real rush to kind of get to the RTX 40 series or RDNA 3 or whatever, simply because well, yeah, most people haven't even got, let's say, an RTX 3080 at this point who want one. As for Intel, I suspect it's going to be very similar. I think Intel may release sooner out of the three vendors, and Intel are kind of the dark horse. We don't know a huge amount in terms of its performance at the moment or its overall plan in the market. For example, we know AMD are going to release a GPU. We know AMD are going to have variants which are, you know, say the 7800 XT. And we know that they're going to be available for AIBs and all of that stuff. We have no idea how Intel are going to play this with marketing, with how it's going to segment the cards and the professional lineup and all of this stuff. We don't even know if you're going to be able to buy, say, a Zotac or an MSI version or whatever of an Intel card. You know, we can speculate there's been a ton of rumors but we don't honestly know how Intel are gonna play it. But right now we believe that they're gonna be going for kind of mid-ish range with their performance. And honestly, I'm okay with that. 
The question is, is it mid-performance with the 3070, which is how people are taking the rumor, or is it mid-performance with the next generation card? Personally, I think it's going to be the former rather than the latter, and Intel are going to put out their card initially to compete with this generation of NVIDIA products and, Int and uh, AMD products, and then they're going to release faster cards down the line when AMD and NVIDIA get their next generation out. But who knows? That is pure speculation on my part. That is not based on any solid information, so please don't take it as such. TLDR then, if you do want a card, you're gonna be waiting until next year at the earliest if you wanna skip this generation. Performance targets are definitely very impressive. RDNA 3 could have a two and a half times increase in performance over RDNA 2, thanks to it having double the number of compute units, IPC gains, tweaks to the architecture, goodness knows what else. And of course, improvements as well to key features like hardware-based ray tracing. I'm hearing, you know, RT performance like for like is gonna be much faster on the newer architecture. Again, a lot of that you can expect, of course, moving one architecture to the next. And NVIDIA's Lovelace, I think is gonna be pretty good as well. I don't know how it's gonna scale given it's just a monolithic die. However, if we look at uh, Ampere, there are definitely, problems with the Ampere architecture, just like there are with RDNA. So NVIDIA tweaking the way that the GPU's resources are used and just kind of changing things around, which is way outside the scope of this video to discuss, we can definitely see that there is a lot of room for them to improve performance and better utilize the CUDA cores when it comes to certain workloads. I don't know though. It'll be very interesting to see how uh, NVIDIA and AMD both employ, you know, their, their marketing there. Well guys, my honest opinion is if you do want to wait until Lovelace or RDNA 3, you've got quite the wait ahead of you. I'm probably guessing around a year at best. But if you have a fairly decent card already, let's say an RTX 2080 Super or an RX 5700 XT or whatever, you're probably good to go for now. I mean, sure, you are going to be missing out potentially, you know, depending on your architecture, on certain features like mesh shading or hardware-based ray tracing. But again, I don't think it's that big of a deal for now. It's probably going to be a very different, you know, conversation we could have in a year's time, particularly as things like sampler feedback become more prevalent or actually just used at all in games, let alone prevalent. I definitely know a lot of you are just considering picking up a console like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X, and there is definitely a lot of merit there, of course. They are too experiencing their own shortages, which means even getting hold of a console is much more difficult than usual. CPUs don't really seem to be a big problem though. It really does seem to be the GPUs, because honestly, CPUs you can keep for longer and if you've got, say, a 3700X, okay, you're going to get maybe slightly better minimum frames if you jump to a 5800X, but eh, who cares, right? I mean, it's really the GPU that most people want, especially as higher refresh rate or 4K screens just become more common. And yeah, let me know if your experience is different, by the way, on CPUs. 5600Xs on the little bit I've looked to help friends build systems seem fairly common and 5800s aren't too bad. The 5900 is basically good luck to you, sir. And the 5950X is, well, if you get one, I would suggest that, uh, yeah, you probably just used up the rest of the luck for your entire lifespan. Intel does have some, you know, decent solutions. I know that that's not a popular thing to say in, you know, recent times as everyone's just like railing on Rocket Lake and rightfully so on certain SKUs. The 11400 does make a kind of argument for itself. I believe it's like 140 pounds, he says from memory, which with a decent motherboard is arguable for a cheaper gaming rig. Although, you know, that's all down to you, of course. But with the issues we're having with mining, work from home, gaming being so popular at the moment, again, it's really the GPU that's the, the difficult factor here. And I think that you are going to have to wait a while before they become very, you know, standard. I'm actually hearing some people are thinking that it's not going to actually, you know, people in the industry are whispering to me that they don't think it's going to be resolved, as in you're going to easier be able to buy a card until next year. So who knows? I mean, for some people, it could be that by the time the shortages are resolved, you're going to be picking up, say, an RTX 40 anyway. With that said, 
I do think that if you are kind of careful and you look on websites like AMD's own website seems okay at getting cards if you're again you know kind of uh, you know vigilant uh, and some friends as well have had pretty good luck and what I'm about to say I just want to stress is not sponsored uh, and I'm probably going to get this wrong um, I, I can't I honestly can't remember if it's Canada computers or Canadian computers but a couple of friends have had decent luck literally walking into stores and, and of course, this does depend on the region of the world you are in and, you know, what's going on with lockdown and stuff and asking about, you know, just can they put their name down if people cancel their pre-orders or I, I'm not exactly sure what, you know, they've done, but, you know, it seems that they have gotten uh, cancelled cards uh, for people who can't get hold of them or whatever. And in those cases, they are able to get the card, of course, at MSRP. So, you know, you can get hold of the cards, it's just not easy. And again, it does depend on the region of the world you are in, what's going on with lockdown and stuff like that. Well, hopefully you have found this video somewhat informative. I know that there is a lot of rightful frustration at the moment in the state of PC hardware in terms of the shortages, but I do think that the frustration is eventually going to pay off and it's going to be worth it, given that we are going to be experiencing some amazing games and tech coming up over the next year or so. In fact, arguably, we are probably in the best position out of, you know, console and PC, what I have been for a long time, because not only do we get access to all of Microsoft's exclusives as they come out, uh, for example, the new Halo and whatever else, but Sony 2 are starting to port some of its games over. I don't think we're going to get every single PlayStation exclusive to the PC by any stretch of the imagination, but there will be some select titles which do make their way over, which of course, is only ever, at least in my opinion, a good thing. Ultimately, being able to play and enjoy these experiences is kind of why we're upgrading our rigs anyway. So I think in that respect, we are in a pretty good position. Hopefully, though, um, you've enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.